everybody my name is angie morenga you're watching just angie it's the voices of the ecclesia it's october 20th happy mashuda day wherever you are i don't know where my tambourine is i keep forgetting it so happy mashuda day maybe we can say to all the mashujas out there and i just wanted to remember what was mashuda day about it says it's also known as heroes day Mashuja in Swahili is Swahili for heroes. It's a national day in Kenya, which is observed on the 20th of October, which is today as a public holiday to collectively honor all those who contributed towards the struggle for Kenya's independence or positively contributed in the post-independent Kenya. So I celebrate you and we celebrate all the Mashujas out there. And then I love when God does this. The word he wanted me to bring you today was from Nehemiah. And I'm like, wow. Nehemiah was definitely a Mashuja. He was a hero of his day. But there's something I read here in the commentary that was talking about us standing up, you know, and, and taking that place. Because many times we want the, the problems in our nations to be solved by other people and never about us. So I thought this is very appropriate. So this is what it says even before I read the scripture. Um, it's based on Nehemiah 1. And it sort of talks about Nehemiah was, his work was centered on serving, pleasing the king of Persia. But when news about the desperate plight of his country and fellow Jews reaches Nehemiah, his thoughts turn homeward. His beautiful Jerusalem is in shambles. And who knows, perhaps many of his family and friends have been killed. So we're not surprised to see what he does in verse 4. I sat down and wept and mourned for days. And his response is one many of us can relate to. But how many of us do what Nehemiah does next? Because along with his weeping and mourning, he fasts, prays, and then takes action. And I love this statement. It's one thing to leave a prayer in the sovereign hands of God and think, God will use my intercession to motivate community leaders into action. He'll set things right where he is good and ready. So that's what many of us do. We pray and we say we have prayed. So now God should do something about it. Surely he should start moving people because we have prayed. It's quite another to become actively engaged in God's sovereign plan. Yielding yourself, myself, as his agent of change. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. So Nehemiah, chapter 1, verse 1 says, the, I like the title, it says, Report from Jerusalem. The words of Nehemiah, son of Hasa, Hasalia. Now it happened in the month of Kislev, in the 20th year. As I was in Susa, the citadel, that Hanani, one of my brothers, came with certain men from Judah. And I asked them concerning the Jews who escaped, who had survived the exile, and concerning Jerusalem. And they said to me, the remnant there in the province who had survived the exile is in great trouble and shame. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down and its gates are destroyed by fire. Nehemiah's prayer. As soon as I heard these words, I sat down and wept and mourned for days. And I continued fasting and praying before the God of heaven. And I said, O oh Lord God of heaven, the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandment. Let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer of your servant that I now pray before you day and night for the people of Israel your servants, confessing the sins of the people of Israel, which we have sinned against you. And you know, we can just say, Father, let your ear be attentive and your ears, eyes open to hear the prayers of your servants that pray before you day and night for the people of Kenya, the people of Africa, the people of this continent, confessing the sins of the people of Kenya and of Africa, which we have sinned against you. Even I and my father's house have sinned. We have acted very corruptly against you and have not kept the commandments 
the statutes and the rules that you commanded your servant Moses. Remember the word that you commanded your servant Moses saying, if you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the people. But if you return to me and keep my commandments and do them, though your outcasts are in the uttermost parts of heaven, from there I will gather them and bring them back to the place that I have chosen to make my dwell, my, my name dwell there. And it goes on and on. And then I love the way that Nehemiah leaves and then goes and repairs it. But first of all, I love that Nehemiah is very organized. And so I think the message is, this is Mashujade. These are people either before independence or post-independence have stepped up. You know, I feel like they've stepped up into the plate because everybody could have sat and said, somebody else will do it. And as a church, we are good at praying, which is good. Prophetic intercession pro produces results. But I, we can't just stop there. I keep hearing my spirit, we have to stand up and be counted. What are you doing? Maybe you don't have to go on a national platform. That's not your calling. Who are you? What are you doing? Who are you stepping up for? Who, who, who needs your voice? Who needs your justice? Who needs your action? Get up and do something. You can't just sit. We can't just have conversations. I guess we can, but... We cannot stop at having conversations on Twitter or where else do you have conversations? On TikTok, on social media, and then leave it there, especially the, the middle class in this country. You know, I think we just, so we vent, we voice, at least Gen Z went to the streets. That was, they did something. But I'm just saying everybody else needs to stand up and do something. That's what I'm feeling. Because Nehemiah, he wept, he mourned, and he fasted. But he didn't leave it there. He said, he didn't say, I've, I've wept, I've mourned, I've prayed, and I've fasted. Now, somebody will get into action. God will organize somebody to go and do it. No, he had to step up and do it himself. And then he was organized. I, I'll never forget. For me, the greatest thing I've ever learned from Nehemiah is organization. That he, he asked for the letters he would need. He asked for the visas. He, 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 he knew what kind of materials he would need, where he needed to get them from. And he, get, he got all that organized. Many of us, many, many of us, many of us, many of us. It is you arrive in Jerusalem and you have nothing. You have no, first of all, you don't, maybe you don't even arrive because it looked like he needed visas to go through different counties. Yeah. So you, you have arrived. You, 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 you. Okay, let's just say you got the visas you got through, but you don't have the late letters. I think you had to get letters for the, the keeper of the forest, you know. I love that he inspected the work himself. He first went round himself to see what kind of work needed to be done. But he already had his documents. Many of us, we arrive without documents. We arrive without thinking, without strategy, without thinking, what do I need to execute this assignment? But the main message is somebody needs to step up. That we have, we, we have wept, we have mourned, we have prayed, we have fasted. What's the next step of action? What do I do? How do I mobilize? How do I help? How do I assist? How do I step into a Mashuja's shoes and do something, become that person, become the solution? That's the thing. Become the solution. Identify a problem and go at it. And don't start a committee around it. Don't start calling people who are not called. It's like my famous story. God says start walking in the morning at Jaffrey. You have to get five people to walk with you. They all cancel. You don't walk. It's just crazy. Nehemiah got up. He went by himself. He needed the people because you need people. We need collaboration. We need community. But the first step was him getting up. He had to get up. He had to do something beyond the prayer. So whether it's as a, now I'm back to the community, but whether it's a community, whether it's a church, whether it's a fellowship, whether it's a group of friends, what, what can we do? to rebuild this nation, protect this nation. Because I feel like in Kenya, there's a rebuilding taking place spiritually. There is. 
I know that um, Apostle Reverend Julian Kula has um, um, meetings around um, building. It's even one, I think the Kingdom Women Convention is about the woman as a builder, but we all have to build. This, I think the retreat I have in November is about rebuilding as well. There's a rebuilding that's taking place. Uh, and, and you see life is spiritual. So the rebuilding starts spiritually, which is the way it started. It started with with uh, weeping. So there's a reaction. It started with mourning. It started with fasting. It now started with prayer. But after that, there's more. There's now the action of what do we do? So when we have prayed, you need to get some instructions and you need to do something. So I'm saying there's a work of rebuilding that's going on in the nation. And there's a spiritual work, but there's a physical work as well. There's a, a rebuilding of minds. Maybe that's why all these meetings are happening as well, because we need to rebuild. The Bible says that our minds are renewed by the word of God. So there's a rebuilding in minds and a, and a change in mindsets. There's a rebuilding in, in the will. People have to be submitted to the will, to the purpose, to the plan of God, you know. And especially if this message is tugging at you, that means there's something in you. I think many of us, we've really suppressed a part of ourselves that is about assignment and about stepping up and standing up and going and doing instead of thinking somebody else will do it. You know, the other thing with Nehemiah is that everybody built the wall near their home and that the wall was the same. That story fascinates me and I still have to do a deep dive how come the world was the same I don't build the same we, we don't do things the same way if we're given even a project the same one because I mean I told you my art teacher used to see me and cry tears real tears was terrible like you cannot be anywhere so building is not going to be my 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 strength but somebody else is building but how come the world was the same So everyone, you have to identify what is it, that statement of near my house. Is it in your marketplace? Is it in your family? Is it in your community? Is it in your shards? What requires attention, requires you to rebuild? And if all of us take part in that, all of us take part in being a, a, a shuja, All of us take part in being a shuja. All of us take part in taking a step towards a solution that God has put in your heart. What makes you weep? What news? Because when Nehemiah had the news, he wept. What is a burden? Because that's the other way that God speaks to us. Is, is there's a burden that's very individual to you. There's a burden that you have. There's a burden that you can rally people around. It could be a burden as a community. But we can't just build higher walls, higher gates, and hide. I was going to say hide in our mansions, hide in our seclusion, hide in our gated communities. There's a whole world out there. Like for me, I don't know why, but I've been feeling it a lot. Like, who's going to solve the problem of all the people who work to work in Kenya? They walk from the different settlements all the way to industrial area. Who's going to stop that problem? Because that's a big problem. Why? Why are we working? And companies are making good money. Why can't you transport your staff? Who's going to solve the problem of housing for the poor? Who's going to keep people water, sanitation? Who's going to ensure that the people, they step up, they move from, 
from one level to another. Just step them up. Who's going to educate somebody who's able then to deliver their family? Who's going to employ people? Who's going to solve the problem that there's so much unemployment in this country? And you see, if you look at the problem, I think I've said that before. If you look at the problem wholesome, you'll have a problem. And I always reminded me, it's like vision. Vision is like food on a plate. It's all there, arranged nicely. But you can't gulp it all up. You have to break it down into little bits and then eat it in little pieces. And it could be even, what's your piece on this plate? And you just need to do what you need to do. Because if you say my, my response is too small, then you will never do anything. But it looks like it's the small, small, small that becomes a collective. Because the wall was rebuilt in 52 days. But each person was building near their house. Near their house, near their home, near their community, near their family. There's a work of rebuilding. It's happening spiritually, but it has to happen physically. I'm telling you, I wish I could use this. I wish I could draw the visions that I see in my spirit because I'm seeing somebody stepping up onto a plate, stepping up onto, like even those platforms for, maybe it's because I watched the Olympics recently, but that one, two, three, they, there's a step up. And, and then you have to step other people up with you. You can't step up by yourself. What does a win for you look like? How does God win? How does community win? How does family win? as you win because that's what Nehemiah did Nehemiah was okay where he was but he 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 felt something responded spiritually to it then went into action to do it and then when he left you know that's the other thing and I think these are good leadership lessons even me I'm learning you see after he built the seat the wall put back the gates put order he put some people he, he positioned some people within the the, the, the community within the city, then others outside, and then he left. You see, that's, the, that's, that's leadership. He didn't apportion for himself a house. It'd be a temptation to apportion me. How can you help all these people? Eh? Even me, even me, I ask myself, hey, God, hey, 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 wait, wait, wait. And me, there's always that answer of, and me, then you realize, no, there's nothing here about you. How, how would this become about you, Pastor? Move on. So he didn't apportion for himself a house. He didn't establish himself a house. He didn't give himself the best, the best uh, <laughs> plot. He didn't build himself the best. He didn't say, how can you build for these houses Get next to the gate, Mimi ni kwa gate. No. He, could, he, he did his assignments and he left. And maybe some of us, that's where we are stuck. And especially in the world that we live in, and especially in this country called Kenya. What's in it for me is highlight number one. Like, how can you just possibly do things for people? Yeah. I'm also human, but no. Am I selfless? He just did his assignment and went back to his work and didn't apportion something for themselves. That thing is keep repeating, especially Kenyans. He did not apportion something for himself. It seems like foolishness, but I'm so grateful that the world, the world, God has called it foolish. And, and the, the ways of God seem foolish. But they are not foolish. God knows what he's doing. And I guess for Nehemiah, I still am going to do a deep dive still, but for Nehemiah, he followed his instructions and went. There was nowhere in the instruction where it said, a portion of house for yourself. A portion of peace. There was, there was nowhere in the instruction. He did what he was doing and then he went back. I'm sure when I think about the heroes, there are many heroes, pre-independence, post-independence, who just did what some, what God asked them to do or whoever they called their God. They felt a conviction, they did it, and then that's it. That's it. It, it doesn't have to be about you and, and it should not end up being about you. Let God be the rewarder because he's a rewarder. Let God be the one who rewards you. The Bible says that his compensation, your compensation is in his hands. 
he has a reward. Let it be his reward. You cannot define the reward and execute the reward yourself. Something is wrong with that. So we give God thanks for all the heroes, not only in Kenya, but all over the world. Everybody who has stood up to do something, to do something sacrificial, to follow instructions, to look at a situation and decide, I want to do something about this situation. And they did it. Because I don't know why, but as I pray, I'm thinking about how life is fleeting. How we used to have powerhouses. In, I'm just thinking in my, in my country. He, firebrand, activist, firebrands. But they passed because they grew old. And, and that was that. That story was over. That season was over. I remember meeting one once. I went to preach in a church. And I found him there. Very quiet. And I walked up to him and I just said, thank you so much for all the changes that you helped to bring about together with your companions. And, and there were tears in his eyes because... You see, the problem with life is it's a season. It's a season. <laughs> Today, let me just be morbid because I don't know why I'm being morbid. But the other thing I was remembering that day was that of, of, during the Olympics, they kept saying this world record was held by this person. Hey! And, and, and they were just mentioning them. These people had, you can imagine what it takes to become an Olympic champion. But now that's it's yesterday's news now. To Menda. Now they are looking for new world record holders and they just mentioned this person. And it got me thinking, you know, champions, hiya, they are being born every day. Every day. So maybe I'll say, please don't lose out on your time of visitation. Do what you need to do. Get over yourself quickly because this is not about you. This will one day just be a mention. There was a world record holder who did this. Yeah, but this is the new world record holder. One day to be a mention when I think about all those fallen heroes. And they fell, I mean, naturally, nobody, they just, it was time passed, age passes, you know, and they passed on. And they are remembered no more. Maybe once in a while, maybe we remember them on the 20th day of October. At least we have a day to remember them. But maybe even it's for somebody out there, you will not be remembered by anyone. You just do what God is asking you to do. Stop looking for your reward here. Let him give you a reward where he wants to give it to you. I think it's the message. Eh? This message has been a hard message. But it's spoken to me. Because like also me, I'm always looking for reward. When will this boy reward me? Eh? Where is my reward? There's no reward. The reward will come how God wants. I must say there are many areas in my life that God has rewarded me. He loves me. He assures me that he does. But sometimes I want the reward the way I want it or the way the world has defined it and it's not going to happen. So my prayer is that many in Hemaya step up, uh, many communities, church communities, you have prayed, you have fasted, you've done 21 days of fasting, 30 days of fasting, 50 days of fasting, good. What's the action? Who is around us? Who can we help? Where is God directing us to direct our energy? And then make sure you're consistent and that you go the long haul. Amen. Amen and God bless. Happy Mashuja Day. Be a hero for somebody. Step up. Step up. God bless you. Bye. Mm -hmm.